Um, can you guys see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So this is summer reading theme for the program is Tells and Tells. And so we have a bunch of fun things to go along with that theme um, and a bunch of fun activities. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about why to attend a summer reading program at the library. Summer reading is one of the key factors contributing to achievement gaps between struggling and successful students. So if you have children at home that um, need an extra boost for the school year and you don't want them to go back and be behind or to have lost some of the knowledge that they've gained throughout the year, then summer reading is one of those factors that helps contribute to that. Um, and then <clears throat> lower achieving students are less likely to read out of school. So a summer reading program is a way to give them an incentive and help them to want to read and to get involved in that. Those comfortable with reading are more likely to choose reading as a recreational summer activity. And so as they become more comfortable with reading, they read more in the summer, then they will choose that as one of their activities more. Having access to books, having access to books at home are essential to reading, building strong readers. And the library, we're able to help with that. We provide them with resources for that. Um, public libraries, can break these cycles and get materials into the homes of the children. Children who read over the summer or who don't read over the summer lose three months of their reading comprehension. And they actually like have done some studies and they figure that by the end of sixth grade, if they don't read, they're up to two years behind their peers in reading and literacy. Middle school is too late to start. In fact, we recommend you start reading with um, even your children that are just like infants, read small books, at the summer read for the summer reading program, we have several um, levels. We actually have adults. We have adult, preschool, um, children, teen. So we kind of cover the whole gamut. We actually do. We used to just do children's and preschool together, but we have decided that children and preschool need a different reading requirement because the younger the younger kids have a little bit less of an attention span for reading. And so we needed to adjust the requirements so that they could still feel success and be able to achieve goals and, and get prizes. Reading as few as four books will help keep them at their current reading levels. And um, young children with richer home literacy environments succeed when they begin school. And freedom, freedom to select reading materials actually is one of those things that will help your more reluctant readers to want to read. So if you allow them to select things, I know a lot of parents are like, I don't want them reading graphic novels. Graphic novels aren't like they used to be. We used to see graphic novels and they were um, more like a comic book type. Graphic novels nowadays actually are very text rich and they contain themes and also plot lines and storylines. So it's, it's a completely different thing. And a lot of your reluctant readers, they will read graphic novels because they think that they're like more like the picture books and they'll read and enjoy it and they won't actually realize that they're, they're reading. So that may be one way to go if you have kind of a reluctant reader. And um, the goal is just to try to find what they really want to. So this is kind of why some are reading at the library, but we just encourage reading over the summer overall. So if you don't make it into the library or you don't want to do it, then that's fine. Just encourage reading because it helps them overcome their lear learning loss during the summer and it, and it, it enhances their reading proficiency. It encourages creative thinking skills. Ask your children questions as you read with them. Ask them like, Ask them about the characters, ask them about the plot, ask them questions like as things are going on throughout the story. It helps kids develop a love of reading and it can open up parent conversations about the book or the story they're reading. Let me go. So I have here um, how to sign up for our summer reading program at the Tremont and City Library. We've actually made it so you can sign up online because I know some people are still working on trying to decide how much they want to be 
out there and doing things in the community. Um, they will, um, we are, this year, we are having a summer reading kickoff party. That was next last year because of COVID. This year, we're bringing it back, but we is kind of, we're going to spread things out throughout the park. There's going to be different stations that people go to so that we can keep keep people kind of distanced a little, but have a fun, enjoyable um, activity. We find that it's a great way to boost our summer reading and also get people involved and enjoying things. So if you want to sign up for a, the summer reading, we're doing pre-registration right now through Beanstack, and you go to our library website, and I have the address right there. It's um, tremontonlibrary.org. Click on the pre-registration for summer reading program and then choose which program you want to register for. We'll have you um, sign up and fill, up a, fill out a bunch of information. And then, and then you'll just log your reading there. So it doesn't draw you into going into the library all the time. And it also keeps track of all the prizes and the, point, the drawing tickets and the different things that you get along the way. So if you don't make it in like that week, you can come back and it's all logged on there and they'll, they'll give you your children's are doing kind of individual prizes as we go along. Adults are doing a drawing type thing. The teens are doing something fun. They're playing um, Readopoly and there's prizes for that as they go along. You know, when is your summer kickoff going to be for Tremont? Okay, I'm oh, just getting to that right now. Okay, that was my I next just wanted slide. to make sure I, you didn't, I didn't miss it. <laughs> nope. I have, six, I have six kids, so my life is kind of chaotic. And so I totally made myself a slideshow so I can make sure to hit all the points I needed to tell you guys about today. So June 4th from 5 to 7 is our summer reading kickoff party. And there's going to be fun games centered around tells and tells themes. They're going to have author visits there. I called and talked to the lead librarian today, and she says that we have 11 authors signed up to come on that day. So there'll be 11 authors there. They'll have books that you can buy if you want. They'll be signing. And I think that they're going to have a little contest go around that as you go around from place to place and sign up with the, like, check out the authors, they'll sign a little thing and then they have some prizes too for that. We're going to have face painting. Um, what I'm doing for the children's thing is we have a stuffed animal pet adoption event. And so they get to come and choose a pet and then they'll get to like make a little adoption certificate. We'll talk about feeding and taking care of your pets and all these different like things as we you go along. Um, they're going to have some live animals there. They have a puppet show coming. They'll have the sign up for the summer reading there and books to take out. Books to pick out at that time. And then I also found out that we are we are kind of um partnering a lot with like the teens for the with the teen city council and we're going to have a chalk war at the end and it'll be for like all ages too i i'm pretty sure it's not just exclusive to the teens but they're going to have a chalk a chalk war battle and then they'll have the fire trucks there to spray you off when they're done so Hopefully the weather's great and it will be a lot of fun. If they have to adapt things, they will. But this is kind of what we're planning for our summer reading kickoff. It's a great way to kind of end up the school week because kids get out of school at noon on that day. So then just bring them. We'll have a big party that night and then they're ready to start summer reading. The adult summer reading program is um, when you complete each challenge, they'll have you, you'll receive like a virtual ticket, be put into a weekly drawing. Each challenge you complete, also your name will be put in the drawing for the grand prizes at the end, which are bigger fun things. Anyway, and then uh, they'll do the, when you come to the park, you'll get a free book for signing up for that program. The teen summer reading, I told you they're doing a book monopoly, so a bookopoly. <laughs> um, and then they have like a bookopoly card. And as you like read genres, you'll mark off different spaces along the card. And when you collect like three of one color, you get a prize. And when you collect, so they'll have that all together for the teens, but they've kind of made it into kind of a fun game type reading thing.
the children's the children's summer reading um, because most of the time the schools encourage at least 20 minutes of reading for chil children in school age. We do it in a 20 minute increment. You read 100 minutes, which will be five days a week, and you can go in and redeem it for a prize. We have little scratch tickets. They scratch the ticket and see what fun prize they they win. And then at the end, if you completed all the weeks, so you've read the 100 minutes a week per week throughout the summer, and I think the program, I think it ends up lasting like nine weeks. You do that, and it'll, so it goes from June 1st to July 30th. Once you've done that with all the um, logging of your prizes and you complete all the challenges, then you'll be eligible for a scratch ticket for the final completion prize, which are a little bit bigger in user prize. The preschool summer reading is similar to that, but because we know that the preschoolers have a little bit um, less of an attention span, we've kind of taken the login minutes to 10 minute increments instead of the 20 minutes, because then we figure you can do any age in that preschool range. Of course, like your four and five year olds will probably want to read a little bit more, but it still allows your younger kids to be able to get prizes and, and enjoy reading. So theirs is only 50 minutes per week. There's another thing we've been do that we're doing that goes along with the summer reading and you can sign up for it and being stacked also. It's not started yet, but there is one right now for spring and spring and spring and winter running because that one hasn't ended yet, but it's a page turner event is what it's called. And it's a program where this one, the one in the summer will go along with the summer reading theme. This one right now goes along with a different theme, but um, what you do is you go in and they have videos you can watch, they have author visits, they have crafts that you can make, they have um, weekly stories and everything is kind of centered around a fun theme. It's a lot of fun. You should just go in and sign up even just to check it out. But there's just videos for all this. So this is kind of an online summer reading thing that you can do with your kids throughout the summer. Uh, so I also got, well, so I'm gonna tell you about one thing before I tell you about our other summer reading events. Because I called in and I talked to Kim, who's the lead librarian at Tremont and City Library. And she said that we are getting, starting June 1st, we are getting a new program. I think what she, uh, I think the what she said it was is called NAVI. And it is a screening program for libraries. So it will be free with your library card that you'll be able to access. Um, and she says that there's, so we have like overdrive and one click digital that we do well it's not one click digital anymore it's part i think it's part of overdrive now <laughs> but that that you do video that you do audio books and you also do um ebooks with but navi is going to allow streaming of audio books ebooks and um movies and it's not just um Overdrive is kind of limited in that you have to like, you can only check out so many items, you have to wait for something to be returned sometimes before you can check it out and they'll email you. There's only so many checkouts. This, this service isn't limited to that. And so you can have a couple of things out. You don't have to wait for things to come back in. They have more um, options for checking that out. So that's a new thing that what she just told me about today that we're getting and she says it'll be available June 1st. So if you're interested in that, check it. I'm sure there'll be more information on our webpage as we get closer to it. And also, um, they'd be able to tell you about that and help help you with that at the library. If anyone has any questions as we go along, please feel free to ask. So these are other summer reading events that we have going on. We have right now tucked in Tuesday, every Tuesday night from seven to eight on our library Facebook page. We do a, um, cause we're not doing in, in person story times. Our library is really small. And so it was 
it was kind of an, <laughs> an interesting problem with COVID to try to figure out how to be able to do a story hour and still keep kids kind of distance. So what we do is we have craft kits for each of the Tucked In Tuesdays that you can go pick up during the week at the library. And then on Tuesday nights from seven to eight, we do a Tucked In Tuesday library story hour and they read a book and then you have your craft that goes along with it. We have several other like um, programs that you just kind of pick up. Each month we do a, usually a take and make craft and we also have um, search and find throughout the library that you can do while you're there so that it can help keep your kids involved and engaged in things. We have various Facebook author visits that we advertise and put up each month and then in the summer <laughs> and I'm super excited about this we've had Rocky Mountain puppets come for the last two or three years they are amazing she does ventriloquism with puppets and they're so funny and fun and they go along with the summer reading program. And on July 7th at 6.30 p.m. we're going to have Rocky Mountain Puppets come and they're going to do a tells and tells theme, which could be, yeah, lots of fun, really easy for them because most of their puppets are um, animals. So that should be good. And then July 23rd at 10.30 a.m. We have a magician coming. Jason Fun's gonna come and do magic and that's for Tremont and City Days, but it will be in conjunction with the library and at Library Park. Um, okay, other current fun programs we have going on. We have um, an adult book club. They meet online, as far as I know, and so, so if you go into our Beanstack, you can sign up for that. It'll direct you to the Facebook page of the current book that they're reading. You read the book and then they have like a day that they all get together and discuss it. So like, a, I think it's an online Facebook event. We also are still currently running our thousand books before kindergarten and it has a fairy tale theme. So you enjoy reading up to that, you know, thousand books or more with your little ones. And as you read, you log them and you can earn badges and prizes along the way. And it looks like we have a task here. So let me see what this is. So yeah, we're based in Fremont and many of our programs are based online. A couple of years ago, we kind of um, expanded from wanting to serve just Tremonton to wanting to serve Tremonton and and wanting to serve Tremont and surrounding areas because Tremont is a small town surrounded by a lot of rural com communities that don't have access to anything. So, when I say, so let's see, does that mean that these things are accessible to anyone? A lot of these things will be accessible to anyone. Some of the services we provide, anything that requires a card is, is actually accessible to anybody within Box Elder County. About anybody in Box Elder County can come into Tremont and get a card at our library for free. And then, like I said, some of these things require your card number to access, like Overdrive. I think the Navi will do that too. Um, we we have a partnership with Garland Library, and so our cards are usable at both libraries to check out books and do other things. And then I'm trying to think of. Yeah, do you have any more questions about that? We do have, we, the the story hour time was online last year. This year it is going to be in person at the park. And it doesn't require a card number, but it's going to be in, in person. So you will have to be, you will have to be at Tremont and City Library Park at that time. Um, we also have, we also have like an online um, tutoring program that, that's accessible with your card called Brain Fuse. And that's been amazing with the whole COVID thing and, and children being at home too, because they've been able to use the Brain Fuse program with their library card and be able to go in and get online help. So if they have questions, you can go 
online anytime, 24 seven. And they have like a whiteboard storyboard and you can ask somebody and get the help that you need. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, yeah. So the other things that we have, I'm, I'm trying to tell you about a few more library services that we have that are available. The other thing that we've had and we've adapted according, like, especially with COVID, is we check out hotspots from the library. So you can come in if you don't have internet and can access the internet freely. Some people, I know, probably if you're on Zoom right now, you probably have access to internet, but a lot of you may be doing it and using your phone for your Zoom. If you need access for anything at your home with uh, internet, you can come in and use your library card and check out, check out hotspots. Another, another cool thing that we check out at the library is we also check out Kindles um, and Fires. So Kindle Fires, Kindle Fires and Nooks. We check out Kindle Fires and Nooks with books loaded on them. This has been one way that patrons can request books and we can download them on them on the devices without them have to, without them having to be bought all the time. So a lot of people take advantage of checking out our Kindle Fires and our Nooks. For children, we have robotics kits that check out from the library too. Um, in each robotics kit, there's two different kinds. There's a Azobot kit and there's a Koji kit. The Koji kits are based for younger readers and younger um, children. But when they come in and they check out the Koji kit that has a little robot and it does simple emoji pictorial coding. So, it has like a tablet in it. They do pictorial coding and tell the robot what to do. As a bot kits are a little bit more the scratch based drag and drop coding. So it's a little bit more in depth for a little bit older kids. We have, um, oh, and then the other thing that I really want to tell you about right now is our story bridge program. And this is a program that we actually applied for and got a grant to do. It's a way of us to catalog the history of the area. And right now they're collecting histories from a lot of the people who have been influential in the community and who have been out there and doing a lot of things in the community. The really cool thing about um, the program right now for you and, the, and your children is that right now we're living history. With the whole COVID thing, people will look back on this time and go, what was time like back then? And your kids are experiencing probably some, some things dealing with life around COVID too. My kids were home first from school at the end of the year last year when school was shut down. And that was kind of a historical, really crazy time. <laughs> and so during the summer reading program, they're also going to have a story bridge book out there. And they want they want stories from like uh, they want stories from everybody in the community. So if you're there with your children, they'd love to collect some stories about the way things have been and about how you and your family are living and doing things right now, or about how things went during COVID and things that you did then. But they want stories from everybody. And so they're going to have a story, story bridge book or booth to collect stories from everybody. And I'm not sure like <laughs> how many, like where everybody is from. I'm just from the Tremont Library and all the things that, all the things that I've been learning and um, talking about and doing right now are our programs because I know that's what is going on right now and where we're where I'm from, but um, okay, yeah. So I don't know where everybody is from, but every community that you're in, wherever you're at, I would guarantee they have some sort of a summer reading program going on. I know Brigham City. Library does one. I know Garland Library participates in the summer reading program. I know that 
Um, I don't know. Are any of you from across the mountains in Cache Valley? Because I know that the Logan Library always does an amazing summer reading program. North Logan and Smithfield do too. North Logan and Smithfield do too. Yeah. yeah. I, I quite often will go for trainings with libraries throughout the throughout the state. And almost every like almost every library does some sort of summer reading program to help encourage reading. And that will just be on their on their web pages. It looks like Davis County just posted theirs. So and like I said, most of our activities and summer reading things you could do online. I mean, if you're not in Tremonton, Richfield is also doing summer reading program. Yeah. So if you're not in Tremonton, you're more than welcome to come hang out at our summer reading party. Or if you want to like participate, a lot of things we do are online. Yeah, I've never met a library that didn't have a summer reading program either. It's one of those the summer passport. We did a passport program one year too because the theme was um, stories around the world. And so we did a summer reading passport where we had the children read stories from different countries. And as they read the stories from the different countries, then they got a stamp in their passport. So that's, that was a lot of fun. I don't know. This is so, unless anyone has any questions, that's pretty much like, we're going to end a little early, but that's all the programs I know of that are going on right now at the library and different things we're doing. But I encourage you, if you're not in the Tree Mountain area, to check into and see what your what your library is doing. Oh, my Discovery Destination is doing a summer passport program. That would be fun. And a lot, so a lot of libraries allow you even to like sign up for multiple programs. So in our area. There's no like rules against going and signing up for Garland's program and signing up for Tree Mountain's program just because the the main goal for libraries is to encourage your children to read during the summer and to help them to be able to progress and to fill in those learning gaps and continue to read. So does anybody have any questions, comments? I don't have a question, but I just have to comment on that. So I have a boy that's 12 and he's never, ever liked reading. It's like pulling teeth to get him to read because he loves history, but he's never been old enough to read real in depth. But he was behind in his Lexile number, if anybody knows what that is, how they figure out what their reading level is. But anyway, I decided that I was going to pick a book and read it with him. And we read um, Beneath the Scarlet Sky and it's about the Nazis and anyway, but his Lexi level, just from reading that book, jumped up over 500 points. So it's just a testimony that I agree with you that reading is super important and reading with your kids. Like he now has picked his new book he wants to read together. And it is more work on me as a mom to read with him and make that time. But I just have to put in there too that I think, and I've never done the reading program. I just have to say too, I just signed up online, you guys. It was super easy. So I would encourage you to do that. And and yeah, definitely read with your kids. So thank you so much, Janelle, for being with us today and teaching us and, and stuff. Thank you. I, I have this, well, I have a son that's now 16 and he was, he was a reluctant reader till about fifth grade. And a teacher, a teacher put um, a book in his hand that he loved and he read it and he liked it so much they found a book that was similar to it and he read that and he started reading. And now I like at nighttime, I have to go tell him to turn off the light and quit reading so that he'll go to bed. Yeah, so, um, Emily just asked any ideas on how to engage reading with infants? She has an eight month old. Yeah, yeah. Engaging reading with infants is a lot different. You can't just read books like a lot of other people. I, infants are very tactile and so really, so, a little while ago, the State Library set out uh, points of reading and places, and writing's one of those. And um, so when you deal with like books with infants, you have to realize it does, reading doesn't have to actually include holding a book in your hand and reading to them. Reading is anything that engages 
language um, and literacy principles for infants. And so you're going to want to read and do finger plays and rhyming with them. And you can read books with them, but make sure they're short and you don't have to read them word for word. As you read the book, tell them about the story, show them the pictures, make it simple. Um, so you want to engage them with rhyming. You want to, as they start to get older, and I wouldn't do it with like eight months old, eight, um, eight months old, but a little bit older, when you start to get those toddler years, you can actually point out and talk about things that they see in their environment, environmental print. And so you want to start talking about like letters and things that they stand for. And when they see the M on McDonald's, you talk about, oh, yeah, because they understand and they know and they make connections with letters in their environment. Um, so that's my, my ideas for how to engage reading with infants would be to primarily rely upon reading with rhyming and rhythm and um, do finger plays, stories like that that have a tactile connection to them. Perfect. Thank me. Thank you. And Shirley, you said you have a comment. I'm assuming that's you. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. And I, let me just add first to what, to what Janelle was saying about reading with, with eight month olds. The thing that I have found in my home and my children's home, I think the biggest thing with, with little ones is having books around. Your kids are going to do what you do. So my home was always filled with books. My children's homes are filled with books. And so my grandbabies I've noticed are they're picking up books very early on. And of course, they're usually the, the board books and you know the books that have just the pictures and we talk about pictures. It's as my husband says, reading pictures. Um, <laughs> but, but I think that's the big thing is have books around. And you know what? You don't have to buy the books to have them. That's why we have libraries. Go to the library, make that a, you know, so, so that the, you utilize the library and have books in your home and kids will pick up on it much, much sooner, you know, and even, I mean, the babies, as they watch you just like, you know, just like they, they see you with the phone. I mean, we had the funniest thing over the weekend. My little, she must be what, 18 month old grand grandbaby. We looked over and she had picked up her mom's phone and she literally was like talking on the phone. She knows how to use that. It's the same with books, you guys. If you're reading, your kids will learn to love reading and to they will pick up the book and they will they will start reading at a much younger age. And when I say reading, they will they will start mimicking you reading and they will take an interest in books. Now, the thing that I wanted to comment on that I'm super excited about, you guys, one of our For the Summer Passport program, one of our main um, sponsors this summer is a company called Radio, and they have, they're going to be giving all of our families a 30-day free trial to their platform that makes it possible for you to read with your grandchildren like in another state. I will be reading with my grandkids in New York and reading with my grandkids in um, that just moved to Oklahoma and even reading with my grandkids that just moved a few blocks away. Okay, but we're still in different homes. I did this with, my, um, with one of my grandkids the other day and it was so much fun. She kept saying, one more grandma, one more. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Watch for that with the, um, with the summer passport program. And, and take advantage of that opportunity to have your grandparents help. Like Kim, you talked about it's a lot of work um, and it is a lot of work, especially when you have a lot of kids. But wouldn't that be wonderful if you can turn that, get, get your grandparents involved and help build those relationships with grandparents while also you know, doing the reading and participating in the library program um, just super exciting. I'm really excited about that sponsor. So we'll, of course, be sharing much more information about that over with the, the Summer Passport Program. But thank you, Janelle. This was wonderful. And, and Tremont Library is one of the best in the state. You guys do so many exciting things. I have loved being watching you guys. Thank you so much. And we do, we do when you sign up for summer reading, we do give each child a book, too, because we believe in getting books in kids' hands. 
but the adults get one too and the teens get one too. So if you want to sign up. And then also um, I was looking at the engaging reading with infants too. Another thought I had is I've done story hour a lot. And usually in our story hour, we get a wide range of children when we do story hours. And some of them are a little older and some of them are a little younger. And one thing you have to realize is our like adult brain thinks once I start this book, I have to read this whole book. Like our adult brain thinks I'm reading this book to my child and I need to read all of it and I need to read every word and stuff. And it's okay if you start a book and your child is not really liking it. It's okay to paraphrase it and close the book and the end. It's okay. It's going to be fine. And so like when you're reading, just remember to read cues from your child. That will help engage them a little more. Read their read their cues. Know your child. Know what know know about how long they can they can handle reading and also read their cues when they're not really into something and it's okay to close it and do something else. That's fine. Well thank you again, Janelle, for all of that. Um yeah. next week, Shirley, tell me if I'm wrong, we have it down that we will be talking about the summer program, right? Yes, and it will be on Tuesday because on Memorial Day, nobody right. wants to be at Parent Conversations. So next week will be on Tuesday. That is our kickoff day for the Summer Passport Program. Um, super excited, you guys. Please invite everyone to be here. We will be giving away um, a almost a $200 prize. So we're excited about that. Um, and, and yeah, it's going to be our big summer passport kickoff and we'll teach you all of the ins and outs of what you need to know about the summer passport program plus we'll have some special guests so it'll be at the same time at one o'clock so we'll be posting it all over facebook and everywhere so please invite your friends remember if you come and invite friends you get gift cards to go do adventures with your family and everything else so thanks again and hopefully we'll see you guys all next week thank you Thanks, Janelle and Kim.